Battlefield is getting another industry veteran developer. EA is launching a new major IP soon, AMD announces their new graphics cards, and much more on This Week in Gaming. The game director for the Splinter Cell remake left Ubisoft a few weeks ago. They have joined EA's new Battlefield studio in Seattle called Ridgeline Games as a design director. Ridgeline Games is working on a narrative-driven Battlefield game. The studio is headed by Halo's co-creator Marcus Leto, so there's a lot of experience and talent here. And their new design director was also in charge of development on numerous Far Cry games, so it'll be interesting to see what they can bring to the Battlefield franchise. In Battlefield mobile news, the Google Play Store listing has been updated three times in the past week, with some users being able to log into the client. The mobile Battlefield game is still set to launch later this year. It seems like a new playtest is about to go live. Battlefield 1 is currently seeing a major resurgence at the moment thanks to an 88% discount on Steam. The player count has peaked at over 30,000 in the last 24 hours on Steam alone. This massively dwarfs 2042's 4,000 concurrent peak player count, though it'll be interesting to see if 2042's numbers climb once the new season of content is out, featuring the long-awaited class rebalance. Cloud Imperium Games showed off the new updated cargo system coming to Star Citizen in the 3.18 patch. Cargo will be physicalized, exist in the universe, and lock into ship grids. When ships are destroyed, some of that cargo will be destroyed as well, but it'll also be salvageable from the whole of that cargo ship and possibly just floating around in space as well. This may open up new opportunities for piracy in Star Citizen, but it is just the first phase of really a a full new cargo system. It doesn't appear that the first implementation of the system will include the manual unloading and loading of cargo ships yet. The new system is also coming with a new UI for buying, selling, and loading goods onto your ship. This upgrade and more will be hitting Star Citizen with the highly anticipated 3.18 persistent entity streaming patch, which we still don't really have a live release date for. The developers at Treyarch announced on Twitter that Modern Warfare 2 will be making its ranked debut sometime in 2023. This will replace the rank modes for Vanguard and Cold War. League play will begin to wind down this month and players will have until November 22nd to claim any rewards in both games. The devs are promising a new range of things with Modern Warfare 2's ranked mode. This includes ranked playlists and rewards, new skill divisions, skill ratings, and a leaderboard. Many players online have pressed for a reduction in the severity of Modern Warfare 2's skill-based matchmaking in casual play. Perhaps Infinity Ward and Treyarch will loosen the restrictions on SBMM and restrict it to the ranked modes. No other details have been shared as of right now. During an investor call this week, EA announced that they plan to release a major IP sometime before the end of March next year. It's heavily implied that this major title will be Respawn's upcoming Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the highly anticipated sequel to 2019's Fallen Order. Interestingly, EA mentioned how their marketing tactics would change in the future. Instead of building up excitement over a few months, they'll only market their games within the launch window. They claim they're doing this because of how well Apex Legends was received after it was announced just 48 hours before it launched. This method of shocking players with a surprise announcement and then launching the game immediately seemed to affect player numbers positively. This could explain why the marketing has yet to start for the Star Wars sequel. EA may be holding off until we're closer to the March launch window. Industry insider Jeff Grubb previously stated that Survivor would be launching in March 2023, so it seems pretty likely that that is the major IP EA is referring to. Hell Let Loose is an extremely hardcore World War II FPS game that's amassed a significant following on PC and more recently console. The game's final update for the year is just around the corner and this week the devs shared another sneak peek at the new content. Flamethrowers are being introduced to the front lines and will make short work of infantry in close quarter combat. The devs have stated that the flamethrower will set enemy players ablaze and the surrounding area. It can fire for about 20 seconds before refueling is required. Different flamethrower variants will be available to the allies and Axis forces. Alongside the flamethrower, molotovs are also being added in the next update. A single direct hit on an enemy will incinerate them and burn the ground around them. The the winter update is also adding new vehicles as well. The Willys Jeep, Kubel Wagon, and Gaz 67 will make traversing the new snowy Kharkov map much easier. 
This map is based on the German invasion of Russia. It features ruined buildings, open fields, tree lines, and new winter-based factions. An exact release date for the winter update hasn't been announced, but the content will be playable on the game's test client sometime next week. In other EA news, executives have signed a deal with Marvel to publish at least three new action-adventure games, each telling their own original story within the Marvel Universe. The first project being developed at EA Motive is the Iron Man game announced in September. This Iron Man title is currently in pre-production and is being led by the former producer of the Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers games. Uncharted's Amy Hennig is also working with the new Skydance new media studio on their own Marvel game. This game is rumored to feature Black Panther and Captain America. It's still being determined what the third EA Marvel game will be. In August, Embracer Group, the Swedish gaming conglomerate, bought Square Enix Studio for $300 million. This included studios like Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal. Combined, these studios have published hits like Deus Ex, Thief, and Tomb Raider. Just two months after this acquisition, Embracer Group is shutting down Square Enix Montreal. This studio had just rebranded itself to Anima, focusing on mobile gaming. In a statement, Embracer Group justified the closure by saying that they want to focus more on AAA games from now on instead of mobile titles. Sources online suggest that many staff are being moved to Eidos Montreal to work on a new game. Activision Blizzard is disabling another hero in Overwatch 2. A few weeks ago, the Bastion and Torbjorn heroes were disabled due to bugs that made them massively overpowered. And now this week, Blizzard has removed the May hero to fix a glitch. According to a tweet sent out by Blizzard, a bug with May's Ice Wall ability allowed her to reach unintended locations on the map. This gave the hero an unfair advantage over others. Some players see this as another skill to master when playing as May, but it looks as if Blizzard disagrees. There's no ETA for when the hero will be added to the game. This is yet another issue that has plagued the launch of Overwatch 2, but hopefully things will be resolved sooner rather than later. Xbox boss Phil Spencer has once again assured gamers that Microsoft will keep the Call of Duty franchise on Xbox and PlayStation consoles. He stated that as long as there was a PlayStation console to ship on, COD would ship on it. This topic has been at the very center of the Microsoft acquisition discussion for months. Sony is understandably concerned that COD may become platform exclusive, which would impact their sales. As it stands, Microsoft will ship COD on PlayStation for several more years at the very least, but things still need to be clarified on what that means exactly. It is interesting, however, that Sony is fighting hard to retain non-exclusivity despite having so many exclusive deals with COD. Modern Warfare 2 on PlayStation, for example, awards players with extra tier skips for the Battle Pass, an exclusive operator, and additional loadout slots. Remedy announced this week that their next major game launch is still on schedule for next year. Alan Wake 2 is the long-awaited sequel to the cult classic, which we're told is still in active development but progressing well. Remedy is also working on codename Condor, which is a spin-off of 2019's Control. Control blew fans away with its incredible graphics and a mind-bending storyline. Codename Condor is the dev's answer to that. However, it's still in a proof-of-concept stage and a long ways off from release. Though according to the devs, the prototype gameplay already feels very fun. Another Control game is also in the works at Remedy. Codename Heron is suspected to be a direct sequel to the first game and continues the main storyline. AMD has just announced their new graphics cards, the Radeon RX 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT will take on the latest 4000 series from Nvidia. While specific details and performance numbers were not shared during the press event, some important points were mentioned. AMD's cards will massively undercut the 4000 series, the 7900 XT retailing for 900 and the 7900 XTX retailing for 1000, which is about $600 less than the RTX 4090. These new GPUs are the world's first chiplet design. They have a modular design featuring a 5 nanometer GPU die and a 6 nanometer memory cache die. This makes the cards much more power efficient compared to Nvidia's offering. Tech outlets like Linus Tech Tips replicated AMD's benchmarks, which included data from last gen GPUs, and used multipliers to show the new GPU's relative performance targets. They concluded that the 7900 XTX could offer roughly 90% of the RTX 4090's performance, but we'll have to wait for real world data to confirm anything. 
Rumors online suggest the Japanese video game giant Sega is gearing up to ship yet another mini version of a classic console. The packaging for the Mega Mini Drive 2 in Japan contains a link to a customer survey. The survey consists of 47 questions, one of which asks the customers what mini console they'd love to see from Sega next. The options include classic hardware like the Dreamcast, Game Gear, or another Mega Drive Mini. Sega has previously stated that the production on a mini Dreamcast would be costly but would look into it if the demand were there. Not only are these mini console remakes great for nostalgic gamers, but they're also successfully introducing younger generations to classic titles like Sonic 2, Streets of Rage, and Castlevania. Before we move on to the last topic of today's video, let us know in the comments what you want from Ridgeline Games and their new narrative-driven Battlefield title. Are Battlefield campaigns your thing? If so, which one was your favorite? Or are you just interested in the multiplayer modes? The developers at Maxis Studio showcased the tech demo for Project Renee a few weeks ago. This is the tech that will power EA's next Sims game. It promises to build on the previous games and even introduce multiplayer gameplay and incredibly detailed customization. Unfortunately, despite the game not being formally announced, it has already been hacked and pirated. The hackers have stated that the new game will run on Unreal Engine 5 and focus much more on online play. EA has yet to make official comments about The Sims 5, but they may do it sooner because of this hack. Now, if you want to watch something else, I suggest you check out this video where I talk about the potential of Call of Duty killing off Battlefield or vice versa, what that means for gamers, and how realistic that actually might be. I think it's an interesting discussion, one that you guys will like, so check it out. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.